makes you feel like you're Dr. Boo Little. <laughs> to live compassionate lives and uh, treat animals with the same kind of compassion we treat each other. Hello again. My name is Jordan Simpkins from Valley Access Channels in Stillwater. Today, we are at the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Minnesota, off of Dale Street in Roseville. Today, we're gonna to take you on a tour inside the building and check out all the animals being healed. So why don't you join us? Let's go take a peek here. Come on. You have now entered the largest wild animal hospital in the country. Last year we treated 7,302 wild animals. We're really just like a, a vet clinic except for uh, treating dogs and cats like your neighborhood vet clinic does. We're actually in the business of treating injured and orphaned wild animals. This is the intake. This would be very much like uh, if you went into a uh, into the emergency room down at Regents Hospital. Okay. This is, the only difference is we probably get the animals in to get treatment quicker than you would <laughs> if you went into the, into the human emergency. So why hand the animal over to us? And one of the things that we would have you do then at that point is is fill out a uh, an admissions form. Okay. And on this form, we ask for the information from the, the people who brought us the animal what kind of circumstances uh, they found the animal, did they see it get hit by a car, did okay. it fall out of the nest, did they find it in their yard, did they hit it with a weed whacker, um, you know, all the kinds of things right. that then helps us uh, with okay. our medical diagnosis. Sure. And then of course, uh, from my perspective, one of the most important things is we ask people to make a donation to the organization sure. because we're entirely funded by members of the public. Once animals are brought to the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center of Minnesota, they will go to a room called the Holding Room. They will remain there until the veterinarian can look at the animals in the treatment room. Once in the treatment room, the veterinarian will thoroughly examine the animal, determine what it needs to heal, such as medications, treatments, etc. Once examined, the animals will be brought to their respective rooms until full recovery. Once in the treatment room, and they visit the treatment room many times throughout their stay, this particular example of a 13 lion ground squirrel, also known as a gopher, it was dehydrated, hypothermic, with diarrhea. Apparently it got into a window and couldn't get back out. They are currently rehydrating it and giving it food to strengthen it so it has a good chance at survival. striped skunk were ad admitted 10 days ago. Uh, their mother had been shot. Um, assume, we're assuming that that was because she was a nuisance animal in someone's yard. Um, and then thereafter they found that there were two babies that you know, mom wasn't around to care for anymore. Um, and they were brought into us so that we could continue their care. Um, you can see one of the babies has a little red dot on its head. That's a little dot that we made with some nail polish so that we can identify um, the two of them and tell them apart. And we do that so that we can weigh them and monitor each individual animal closely. Um, with these striped skunk, one thing we need to be very conscious of is that they can spray even at a young age. Um, we watch for the telltale warning sign that they're getting agitated and that would be that they are stomping their front feet. Um, when we see that behavior, we make sure that we're going nice and slow and are very careful around these guys um, to avoid getting sprayed. But inevitably that does happen sometimes when you rehabilitate skunks. Um, these guys are still receiving formula as well as some softened dog food um, and eventually they will be moved on to more solid foods 
until they're weaned completely and are no longer in need of our um, formula. And then we will put them in caging outside, get them acclimated to our weather, um, get them eating more natural foods, and eventually release them in appropriate habitat. Jill, hi, Bruno, nice hi, you. nice yes. to meet you. Hi. Um, I work here at the Wildlife Free Up Center as a veterinary technician, and I um, work full time here. So the animals, um, between the veterinary staff and myself, we all take care of the animals here. snapping turtles. It's a common snapping turtle. Um, this animal was brought in to us because it was hit by a car. Um, someone actually found the turtle near Winona, so it brought it two hours away to our center, um, and we were able to do a full exam when he came in. Um, we also cleaned the wounds with a, a solution to disinfect them and um, gave them some time to kind of clean up, and then we went ahead and um, did some surgery on him. This turtle not only had a fracture in the shell, where you can see the wire at the front of the shell here, um, there were also three fractures in the jaw. Now, turtles have a, a keratin layer, kind of like a beak on a bird, um, that's over the bone, um, over their jaw bones. And we were able to drill holes on either side of each crack. Uh, thread a wire through the holes and then twist it closed to make the opposing edges of the uh, fracture come together.